Hello, hello, everybody. Let me just check that I'm good here. Give me one second, please. Check my setup through my iPad right here. Check my setup. All right. Sounds like my audio is good. All right. Yep. Everything looks good to go. Make sure my cameras, all right. Actually got the photo booth finally set up with my camera. All right, just a quick little um, show notes right here that I have, all right. This is really, we're gonna get into like this. So if you've been following the channel long enough, uh, you know I always go by the 10 point checklist. And I just wrote this real quick so you could follow along. And really, when we're working with any, any digitizing software, uh, this is the 10-point checklist that I go with. All right. Um, let me see. Um, let me just, uh, hopefully my internet, I know here um, where I'm at, the internet was kind of on and off. But let me know if there's any problems seeing uh the video all right so if you want to take like a screenshot okay this is this is always like the the steps that's going through my brain when i'm digitizing all right so of course i'm gonna pull it back up all right so you can see it but really to me any any software that you work with okay so a lot of times i'm working with wilcom 4.5 okay that's really pretty much industry standard for digitizers okay not all embroideries need to have that one um but really to make life easy all right but today okay today i kind of got out of my element my comfort zone Okay, because in Wilcom, I'm there like super comfortable. I know where everything's at. I know shortcuts. I know how to make life easy. Okay, today, I kind of going out of my comfort zone. All right, so um, I'm in Chroma today. All right, so this is the file that we're working with today. Let me see. Let me pull it up. All right. Let me know if there's any Niner fans out there. Okay, I'm not a Niners fan. All right, I'm actually just, I like good competition this week. There's uh, the San Fran versus the Detroit Lions. Okay, big game. A lot of like behind the scenes storylines happening. All right, like if you follow football, you know, uh, Jared Goff, quarterback from, from the Lions. He's actually from the Bay. All right, so it's going to be, it's going to be real good this week. All right, so this uh, for today's show, okay, for today's show, I want to digitize. And the reason why I chose San Fran, okay, um, because there's a lot of learning objectives in this logo, okay? I didn't want to just pick like a super easy logo. Uh, this one has a lot of stuff happening, all right? A lot of times we see logos. And really, we, we really don't think much about it, okay? But when we're dealing with embroidery, we're dealing with changes in the stitch angle, okay? Things happening front, back, middle, uh, a lot of layers on top of each other, okay? So if you look at it, every time we have a color on top of a color, that's like a layer. We're, we're, now we have, we got to start thinking about uh, overlaps, all right. Um, a lot of small little details that I want to go into. So we're going to go in. And I know a lot of people have uh, Chroma. Okay. I've had Chroma. Because when you buy a Recoma, they give you Chroma Inspire. All right. It comes with your machine. And usually it, they say it's free, right? They, you always hear the word, oh, uh, Chroma Inspire comes free with your machine. Okay. Um, 
there is a price, all right? It's not like it's something free that you can get in the street, right? You actually, if you wanted to buy it just normal, I think it's like $499, 500 bucks, somewhere around that area. So it's not free, all right? It's not like you have a choice in saying, hey, don't give me Chroma, just bring down my price, right? You don't have that choice, right? But I do want to go into the details of Chroma and I'm a firm believer, all right? I'm a firm believer. If you understand the 10 point checklist of embroidery or the 10 point checklist of digitizing, you could really work in any, any digitizing software, all right? So once again, let me just pull up the show notes, all right? This is, this is how I'll get to the, to the comments right now. Okay. Um, but really, this is really what's going through my brain and what I wanted to do, I wanted to take this, uh, software. I wanted to take Chroma, kind of push it to its limits. All right. Um, and see exactly what can we do, what can what can't we do, all right? Uh, so this past week, that's all I dedicated myself, Chroma, Chroma, going into the the details and seeing because I think uh, I think what really helps me knowing having will come, knowing what what is possible. Okay, sometimes if you start, let's say you start day one and you use Chroma. You probably think that's how all digitizing softwares are, okay? But me knowing what Wilcom could do, like the power of Wilcom, right? It's like the way I see it, this is how I kind of compared it because I was trying to think of how I can compare going from like a big time digitizing software with all the bells and whistles to something that's very stripped down, okay? Very bare bones. Okay, so I was trying to find something um, that I could compare it to. I was thinking of like, if you're driving a car, okay, if you're driving a car, let's say my truck, right? I have a truck. I have the whole windshield where I could see out of, okay? I could see out of my big windshield. I have view of the whole road. Going to a, and this is not just, Chroma, okay. This is just embroidery software in general because every every embroider machine, what I know of, okay, I, for the most part, okay, most of all embroider machines will all will offer you a free digitizing software, and usually it's like the the slim version, okay, or the light version, with everything, all the bells and whistles stripped away. So the way I see it is. When you have um, your regular, your 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 embroidery software with all the bells and whistles, you could see out of the full windshield and these free softwares. It's more like driving out of driving with like a little peephole, like a li you're driving with like a little hole as the windshield where you can still drive. You can still get to where you're going. But it's going to be a little harder than normal, okay? You might have to drive a little slower, okay? You might have to do your turns, right, a little different. Like, you're going to have to take your time when you're making turns. Same thing, okay? That's kind of like the, the best analogy that I kind of thought about today when I was like, how can I compare uh, major, major, big time, $1,000, right? Um, couple of thousand dollars software compared to something that uh, goes with your machine, all right? So that's why I bring the 10-point checklist because if you if you understand the 10-point checklist, you, can, you could really push certain softwares to its limits, all right? All right, um, today, let's see, all right, I want to say hello to everybody. Looks like we have Another jam-packed house today, okay? And this hat right here that I have today, all right? This is actually a hat and it's actually embroidery, okay? It doesn't look like embroidery, right? That's how nice it looks like with the shades, all right? So this, I got this hat 
So this weekend was like the best, best, hands down, the best trade show event ever that I've seen. And many people said that it was the best one they've experienced, even people like 20 plus years going to events. Okay. Um, the impression show at Long Beach, all right, hands down, hands down, easily. The best, best event trade show ever in the history of, especially embroidery trade show, right? But garment decorating, all right. Um, got this hat from Outdoor Cap. All right, you can see it right here. Let me see. Oh, hold on. See if I could get it. Right, bam, right there. All right. Right there, bam. All right, so they, they got a lot of cool hats. Um, so definitely met a lot, a lot of companies. And I was just like a fan of just everything. Everything embroidery, even outside of embroidery, okay? I did get a lot of footage, a lot of videos, a lot of just everything that I was seeing because I wanted to share all that information. So right after this live today, I'm going to get into the, the editing and start chopping up that video for um, for the Long Beach Expo, okay? So I do want to share all the cool stuff that I saw, that I experienced. Um, I do wish I had like a notepad, like the one that I have here. I wish I had a notepad just taking down all the names everybody that I met, all right, from the vendors, okay, I met very good, and one thing about going to these trade shows, okay, let me know if you agree with me, uh, for those who've gone to this one or ones in the past, okay, a lot of times when you're ordering your product, like whether it's your consumables, your, your, your garments, okay, you're in this website, and you don't see who's behind this website, Okay, but there are actual people, right? There are people in this industry on the other side that play a huge role for our success. Okay, so finally, we get to meet the people behind these websites. Okay, and they are some of the most knowledgeable, kindest people, and they know their stuff like they know their products. So sometimes I have, uh, I have questions regarding certain products, right? For example, Puff, right? 3D Puff. All right. Went to Ganold. Spent like 30, 40 minutes talking about Puff. Like never in my life would I ever think that I would spend about almost an hour talking about Puff and just seeing all the different samples of Puff and just everything that Ganold has. All right. So a lot of good stuff that I got that I want to share with everybody. All right. Um, so that's coming in the works for this week. All right. So quick shout outs. Hello, everybody. Uh, we got Cindy King. Hello. T-Town in the house. Robin. Kingsbury. Daneta. All in from New Jersey. All right. We got Idaho City. The house. All right. Vonda. How you doing? Bam, bam. All right. And then this is a good question right here because this I was just thinking about this this week, too. All right. How's it going, Jay Morales? You plan on doing these for Brilliant Stitch Artist? Yes, definitely. Definitely. All right. I got my stitch right here on the Mac ready to go. So uh, that's another one that I want to spend like one week just going in, 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 get a good design and then kind of push it to its limit. Let's see how far we can take it. All right. For the for the brilliance, I have the Stitch Artist 2, 3, whatever the highest one is. Yeah, I think 3. So we definitely going to be able to take that one. All right, T-Town, go Lions. All right. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I don't know. I might have to go for the Lions because of Jared Goff. All right. Took the Rams to the Super Bowl. All right, bam, bam. Matt Gilbert, the house. Donna. Audrey, go Niners. All right. Antonio, Cowboy fan. All right. Bam, bam. MM Customs. All right. Right here. 
Nice seeing you at the show. All right. So I met a ton, a ton of people, right? A ton of people that watch the channels. And I could talk to people about embroidery all day. Uh, so I did have, right? I had so much fun, right? I had so much fun. It was uh, nice seeing um, everybody, right? Because I, I, like, I see your your thumbnails, your pictures, right? But it's good to see the person behind the the, the pictures on um, on YouTube. All right, so Steve, right? What's up, La Habra? All right, Orange County. All right, so many. Um, so many shout outs. Barb, how you doing, Barb? Maryland, Ohio. All right. Crafty Puerto Rican in the house. Moto from Detroit. Mitchell. What's up? All right. All right. Let me just kind of scroll down because so we could get the party started. All right. Bam, bam. Linda Woods, how you doing? Man. Joyce from Miami. All right, all right, all right. So, just quick announcements. All right, um, Mighty Hoops. All right, that's another company that I got to sit down and talk to. All right, real, real good people that know their products. All right, that's pretty much what the theme was for this uh, for this impression show. Okay, uh, so they had all hands on deck right there right from beginning to end their booth was like non-stop packed okay so we got the mighty hoops you see them back there okay um any questions that i can't answer about mighty hoops they they know it all they know everything every machine uh if you want to know if you're um if you're if a certain hoop is compatible with your machine all right they got all the answers all right. Uh, so free shipping for the Mighty Hoops for those who are ready to buy uh, Mighty Hoops. Uh, I got the promo code in the description. OK. We got candle thread in the house here. And for those who were there, saw the uh, like the candle thread booth. OK. Nonstop packed from beginning to end. All right. So they had a real nice wall, uh, the wall threads. All right, it it was just like super shiny. You could see it from like a distance. All right, all right. Uh, so th uh, that too, and then one one last announcement in the description because a lot of people wanna wanna know what needles I buy, what just um, products that I have in the shop. I do have an Amazon link in the description. Okay, you can go to there's a uh, Romero Threads shop that. I list everything that we have. Everything that I put there is like stuff that we actually use. Okay. So if you ever want to know what what thread or what uh what needles, um, what consumables that we use, okay, you can always check there and you could see. And then if there's anything that you don't see, um, you can always ask me. All right. But for the most part, you could see right there. Um, and then MM Customs. They hooked it up with three full spools. All right. Yep. They were they had uh some good some good uh samples they were giving out. All right, yep. Let me know once you run it. Let me know. All right. We got Joyce from Chi Town, Chicago. All right. I already know you're cold over there. All right. Uh if you have any questions for today's show, uh drop a put a cue. If I don't get to your questions, I do want to start making like short videos, just answering questions. Maybe I could get into more details, even into like, especially if you have like digitizing questions. Maybe I can get into um, actual showing when I answer questions. All right. All right. Um, once let me just set up real quick. Uh, let me see. Let's remove this one for right now. And let's go right here. So I'm using, usually I don't use my Mac to digitize. That's why it's easy for me when I'm using my PC. Today, I'm sharing my screen. So hopefully everything works out good. This is actually the first time that I'm not using my PC. I'm, I'm doing everything on my Mac. 
So I'm digitizing on my Mac and I'm streaming live on my Mac. So, all right. All right. So hopefully we don't have any hiccups. Bam, we're right here. Okay. And then, hold on, before I close this one, answer this question real quick. Question, is there a branching feature in Chroma? So I'm about to show you like what we can do, right? Uh, here in this one, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the Inspire to the limit. So I have the Inspire. This is the one that is like the, the first tier uh, Chroma that comes with machines. And a reason why I'm doing this one, okay? The reason why I'm doing today's show, because I've probably got really like, no lie, like 500 times people have asked me, hey, do a video on Chroma, do a video on Chroma. All right, so finally, this this is the week. All right, this is the week. So we're gonna push this one, um, but this one doesn't have branching. Okay, this one doesn't. We're gonna go straight old school here, and we're gonna use like some most basic tools that we got right here. Right. All right. Let's come here, and then I'll be looking at my iPad, making sure that everything is good to go right here. All right, and before we start digitizing, just hit real quick. It's going to take you like one second. Just hit that like real quick. All right, let YouTube know that class is in session and we are ready to learn. All right, all right. So, all right, so let's start with this logo. All right, actually, let me grab my notes from right here. Man. Same one that I was showing right there, but just to kind of have it right here so I don't forget. All right. So number one on the 10 point checklist. All right. And then I made a live last year or the one of there was a live. You could see them on the la on on the on the playlist of the live videos. Uh, it was called the 10 point checklist of embroidery. So you can always check that one afterwards, after this live, you can see that one just, you know, so I go into more details of it, but we're going to kind of go through it. All right. So number one, the checkpoint in the 10 point checklist, number one, we'll just start with number one in general, because number one is your sequence. Okay. Sequence, what sequence is, when you look at a logo, you're kind of, you're kind of measuring it like in your brain as in where you want to start do you want to start from the back side move your way to the front okay everybody has different styles of the way they they digitize okay or do you want to start in the front and work your way back usually usually that i've seen people start from the back and work their way up okay that way you can put your overlaps it's it's i think it's easier to do your overlap starting from the bottom and working your way up Okay, real quick here, let me see. Yeah, it looks good on the screen. So, so far, so good. Okay, let's, let's, let's check some of the setup. So here I have my, my image. All right, when you, when you select your image, all right, here on my right hand side. So usually I, uh, the software so far good because you have your information here on the right hand side. All right. So if you want to make notes, right, if you want to make notes to somebody or yourself, okay, you leave notes here, leave notes here. Okay. You never know. Maybe somebody needs some notes. All right. This one really don't. All right. Like it's brightness, but oh, you got to push apply to. All right. It kind of. Yeah, and then if you don't need it, Control Z or Command Z and push it back. All right, all right. Really, uh, I wish they would have had just opacity, like bring down the opacity. I think it's somebody somewhere here, or you got to bring it in through uh, through this way, um, backdrop tool. Okay, but they don't have an opacity here. All right, and then this is the big one here: is your size. So here, if you right click on your 
on your um, ruler, you can move it to inches. Now, one thing that I want to add is even if you don't have chroma, okay, uh, it's still good to follow along because we're going to see, we're just going to kind of see uh, if we don't have the, the nice fancy tools that some of us are used to, okay, what do we do in those situations? Because sometimes uh, we might get a question from somebody that, that, that doesn't have certain softwares and then we could kind of help them. And this kind of goes with a lot of the entry level softwares. All right. So, um, so here, now I have it in inches. Okay. Uh, you could, bam, I have it height width with 5.3. Really, I don't need it this big two or 1.95 is what I have. All right. I pushed enter. Okay. You push enter or you push apply, but pushing enter is easier. Just keep your aspect ratio. Okay. If you don't have these clicked, it's going to look all, you know, out of proportion. Bam. And you really don't need mirror or flip, right? Unless you're doing some crazy stuff. All right. Once you got your sizing correct, bam, you could come right here and just lock that up. Okay. You put that lock, locks it, doesn't move. Also, if you want to hide it, just put that that one here right all right now we could zoom in and then i'm zooming in by just scrolling with my um, mouse so i got my like my mouse here my regular mouse so if i scroll bam in out all right just fyi and once you're scroll once you're zoomed in space bar space bar puts the pan tool all right, so it has some similarities like if um, Photoshop Illustrator, right? They have like the, the pan tool where you just pan using spacebar. All right, bang. All right, something that's very important is measuring our, we need to know how wide. So usually what I like to do, I, look, I, I try to find what is the, the area that's gonna have the longest sand stitch and the area that's going to have the shortest so maybe here on this s i have right and then for ruler so you have ruler here it's r so i'm used to pushing m but today i'm pushing r then you got to click it and then it'll tell you and then right now it's telling me in inches but to change it to metric Oops, right click right there and then pull it up, bam. All right, 6.2, so not too bad, it's good, easy. And then pan here, just see this side here. All right, 8.9, all right, so we're going kind of wide. All right. Um, so that's real basic stuff, right? We always wanna measure our stuff, kind of see where we're at. Um, you could kind of see where we're these sand stitches about 6.2 this big side all right so we're just kind of measuring right we're filling out this design like let me see what area can be a, a, a pain point okay but really or critical points but really uh, there's nothing too crazy we don't have to think about anything that's too small actually if we look at our the black border, okay, you can you can measure the black borders. Bam, um, right here, all right, point seven millimeters, pretty tiny. Okay, we definitely gonna go bigger. Uh, sand stitches, I like to have um one point five. Anything once you go start going below one point five, like if you're at one or 0.75, you're gonna have a very small, tiny, tiny thin, which might not stick out. You really want it to stand out right here, all right? So maybe 1.5 um, or two millimeters, all right, is what we wanna go with. So right now in the 10 point checklist, we're, we're just at the sequence point, kind of seeing what do we wanna go first, all right? Uh, really, it doesn't matter what you digitize first. There's no like correct answer. Do you want to start on the red? Do you want to start on the black border, the gold? Do you want to do the, the white part of the letter, the black 
border of the SF, okay? It all depends, okay, your style of embroidery, all right? Uh, let me see, make sure I'm not, all right. Bam, bam. All right, just making sure everything's good here. All right, all right, let's continue. Now, let's go up on these features. Let's start here. Usually you start like top left corner. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna click on this one on the right because this has really like your options, all right? Um, all right. All right, so let's go over this, all right? Because there's a lot of like stuff that you might want to change right here. Okay, units, it doesn't matter units here because we could change it easy right there on the screen. So whether you put metric or inch, it doesn't matter because you could change it easy on the ruler, default style. This one here, uh, so you could choose what kind of fabric you're going to do it on. All right, it really doesn't matter because you're, you're always going to be changing underlay. So this is... Um, this, I want to say they're going to put you like the auto underlay, okay? But I like to put my my own underlay depending what I'm doing, okay? Or the size of a certain uh, stitch, right? So I'm just going to keep it at normal. I wish they had one that said none. Like, don't even give me, let me put my own underlay, okay? But they don't have it. I'm just going to keep it with normal, all right? They're going to put... Uh, you don't really need default palette. It's just like your colors. Um, auto match thread color. Yeah, this one doesn't matter. Convert to outlines on loading stitch design. All right. And then theme color right now, you can see it. Everything is dark and black, all right, which is cool. All right. That way, our focus, our eyes could focus on the design. It's easier on our eyes if we keep everything that we're not using. Or focused on uh, dark language English bam bam all right uh, this auto save I never use the auto save all right because sometimes I'm testing things out and I don't want to override certain designs so at like certain point okay uh, really if you have like a very slow computer that constantly crashes you might have to put this auto save all right but if you got a pretty good strong computer and you should be all right, okay? But I don't, I don't put auto save. Uh, I'm usually control save or control S all day, all right? All right, so that's kind of like the environment machine. Uh, this one here, I really didn't change too much stuff here. Activate trim if stitch is longer than 20 millimeter. Of course, you're not gonna go 20 millimeters, right? Um, but we're gonna talk about one of the 10 point checklist is the trim. I'm gonna set my own trim, so it doesn't even matter right here. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Thank you, uh, Robert. We can't see the menu you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Okay, so it's not showing. When I do this screen share, since I'm using the same computer that I'm streaming on, it's not pulling up this uh, this screen right here, right? So, I, so um, I do apologize for that. So I'm just gonna run through this, all right? Just going to run through this one um, real quick, just so you can see the settings that I have. All right. So on machine, remove stitches. I really don't, I'm not messing with anything there. Okay. I'm really not working. Okay. And then that that's a good question. I'm kind of like seeing questions in the corner of my eye right here. All right. Kingsbury, would you consider using red twill as a base? All right. Yeah, that would be a perfect idea. All right. Um, when I sampled it out, I just stitched it out so we can see it. All right. Um, let me just let me just kind of go over. You can I know you can't see this uh, option box right now, but uh, I'm just putting like grid. Uh, I'm putting it at a five millimeters, and then the one that I want to talk about is the digitizing. So if you have Chroma, you, you kind of might know what I'm talking about. Uh, just on the digitizing option, it has it has three options. This is the big one here, right? You have Bezier, uh, simple draw freehand, okay? Unless you're like 
you've used Bezier like for um, Illustrator. Okay, usually simple draw is pretty easy. All right, uh, and then for the for the modes, I just put Advanced right on all three of them. Okay, bam, view. All right, so not much right there. Right, that's all I'm doing. All right, so back, let me go back to the screen here. Okay, so now I'm back. Um, let's first, okay, I'm going to, I do want to talk about everything that we have here. All right. Uh, one thing that you see, like you see the crowns on some of these um, options right here. Like they're letting you know these crowns are not for you. All right. If you have Inspire, all right, you're not using these. It says um, plus and lux only. So you got to upgrade. And on here in the top right hand corner, there's a little upgrade button, right? That's reminding you like, hey, if you want to step your game up, upgrade. All right. So they, they constantly reminding you. All right. And I'll tell you one thing. When you're limited with tools, okay, you're going to always think about upgrade. You're going to be like, you know what? If I had this upgrade version. It it make my life a whole lot easier. All right, and um, it's always good to to know what's out there, right? Know 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 all the softwares and a lot of softwares they do have uh, they do have free trial versions. Okay, so it's always good to kind of know what's out there, test certain things. Okay, uh, I know some people. I know some people like uh, Chroma because it's Mac compatible, right? So if you have a Mac, um, the other ones, maybe you have to buy a, 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 a different computer, all right? I, my, my laptop, my digitizing laptop is for digitizing only because I never use a PC until I had to buy one for digitizing, right? But it was all good, right? But if you have a Mac and you, you want to just have everything on that Mac, then... Uh, this is something that you might want to get. All right. All right. Um, let's go ahead. Okay. Let's go ahead and create this, the red. All right. The red. Obviously, we're not going to use sand stitches, right? We're going to use a fill stitch. All right. And right here, it tells you, you actually have three choices of stitches. Okay. And really, that's all you need, right? The three stitches of embroidery is your run stitch, straight line. You have your sand stitches, right, for letters and borders. And then you have your fill stitches for all these backgrounds, right? So, and then, uh, question, are you doing the SF and puff, okay? I am going to do the SF and puff, but today for this for this class, I'm going to do it flat because I'm going to get into details. I want to give as much detail as possible. All right. So I do want to. But thank you for that question, because you just you just reminded me of like my to do list for the week. So for this week, for this class, I want it to be like a part. One, two, three this week, all right? So what I wanna do, I, I do wanna go into the details of uh, this logo today, but I also wanna digitize the Lions, the Lions uh, logo, and then I wanna do both in 3D Puff. So do this one flat, do the Lions flat, and then do the both in 3D Puff, okay? But that one, uh, I'm just gonna digitize it uh, and then put a video out for that. So I could stitch it out on hats, and you can see how everything is um, uh, set up, all right? But today, I want to really dive deep and go into settings of Chroma, all right? Uh, but thank you for that question, because we are going to do parts two and three and include Puff on it, all right? So, all right, so step number one that we're going to do, all right? Now, let's say we want to do like a, a global underlay, like you want to spread that... Um, that fabric around. Okay, of course, we're going to do a walking stitch first, right? So if the hot key, number two, but to make um,
walking stitch underlays like this. All right, that. All right, and then you could just change the color down here or whatever. Let's put like a black so you could see it. All right, and then here on the right hand side, you could see our threads. And you put 3D version, right? So of course, walking stitches always easy. All right, but let me delete that. Let's go ahead. So that's the the run stitch. This one here is our complex fill. Right, really, it's just called fill stitch. Right. Um. All right. To do a to really trace. Okay. So. Step number two on the 10 point checklist. All right. Tracing. Tracing sequence and tracing to me, that's like the most time consuming part of Digitime. When people say, hey, I just send my, my files out because I don't have time to digitize. This is what they're talking about here. All right. The sequence and the tracing, putting putting everything in order and tracing everything correctly. Okay. Those are the first two items on the checklist. Those are because the rest. Really, the rest of the thing, density, stitch length, stitch angle, underlay, pull, those are all settings. Those are just little clicks that we can select everything and we're just clicking. But these two items here, sequence tracing, all right? If you want to learn digitizing, this is where you're really going to, this is your bread and butter right here. This is where you got to repeat, repeat, do it over and over and over and over till you kind of get the flow of things, all right? So right now, tracing, okay? Uh, here on Chroma, um, since on my settings, I put for advanced digitizing. And there's also a setting. Let me see if I if I found it here, though. Digitizing. Uh, yeah, so I know you can't see it, but um, here on my options, you could put a check mark where it says input curve points with right click. All right, so just like Wilcom. Uh, left is a uh, sharp sharp turn or a pivot, and right click is a smooth curve. All right. All right. So let me go ahead and let me do the red part first. All right. So I want to zoom in right here. All right. Select that. Bam. And then I'm going to right click, right, as you're starting. Um, and then for every little part right there, I'm just putting a right click. That's giving me a curve right there. All right, so I'm curving, curving, All right? There's no sharp points here, so, so I never have to left click on this part of the design, all right? And then let's say like in some parts, you don't get it perfect. You could always go back and change it, all right? It's not as, I would try to get it as perfect as possible because it's not that easy to to adjust certain things. What I'm used to adjusting things. All right. So you get it you get it close and then here we're ready to close this shape. You could just push C the letter C and it'll close it. Oh, well, actually we don't have to do it because it's already a closed shape. So we're going to push return. And then uh, again. All right, then. All right, I'll show you something what happened here. All right. So here, I could do, we got like a, an extra one we didn't, oh, I know why. Yeah, this one came out as a, just put it move change it as a cusp all right you can't you can't see when when i have my um when i right click and the option box comes out you you didn't see that but i just you could change uh your nodes okay so you can click on them and if you want to make it rounded you can make it rounded by right clicking it so when i right click it here you can't see it right now but it, it gives you the option of line cusp, all right? So sharp or a rounded one, all right? So I just made it rounded. All right, bam, we got it right here. OK, 
Okay, I, I'm making it yellow right now, just so we can see it, all right? Now, right now it's in 3D view. If we take it out, you can see the stitches right here, all right? Let me hide. Let's put this black so you can see it, all right? Because I do want to get into some details right here. All right, bam. So we saw our fill right here. Okay, you could double check to see if um if it covered pretty good. What what I what I what I wish they had here. Okay, because I'm like of course I have to compare it to Wilcom, right? Because that's what I'm used to using. But Wilcom, when when you when you see the when you see your object, so the object is what I just traced, right? The actual stitch, the the circle. Um, it should have a uh, a line around what you just drew. Okay, so here when I zoom in, I can't see the line that I drew. Right, I just see the thread, and then when I select it, right, so I not I don't really see the line, but we can actually do some stuff about that. All right, let's say you do want to check it out. You could. So now. Let's hide this. So just because you can't do something doesn't mean you can't fully not do it, right? There's like ways around stuff, right? We got to kind of like cheat the system because we're limited with what we got, all right? So there's little things that we can do to kind of get around certain things, all right? So let's select our black thread, okay? And here, let's go to all the cool stuff that we can do to our designs, all right? Um, so right now, let me take this off. Oh, no. All right, so right now you could change, you could put like a file name, right? All right, all right, here, let me see. Yeah, you can see that. So this first option that we have, fill type tatami, right? That's what we got. Um, on this drop down pattern, which you cannot see, see? No, you can't see it, but it has like all the different stuff like brick, corn, different patterns. Really, I just keep it to Tommy, all right? Um, stitch length, okay, that's not really, this is what's gonna change density, okay? 0.4, I'm cool with 0.4. Actually, stitch length, okay, I'm gonna go with four millimeters. All right, that's that's really uh, the four millimeter stitch length and the 0.4 density. That's the standard on Wilcom. So I've been using that forever. I'm good with that. And what it's going to do, it's actually going to bring down the stitch length, uh, the stitch, uh, stitch count. So right here, if you look at it, it says 4,925. All right, when I push apply, 4,925. So it brought it down about 900 stitches. All right. It'll be too it'll be too dense okay I think some of these settings like just the normal settings you're, you're coming in too dense so you have to come in override some of these uh, these um, settings that are coming in all right so that's like 900 stitches in the beginning right right off the bat right which is gonna play a big role because or else we're gonna have like something that's too strong it's gonna start pulling our fabric too much all right all right, um, so that's that here. And then here, this, the third one, underlay. Okay, this is what I wanna show y'all, right? So let me uncheck all the underlay, push apply, all right? So everything we do, we gotta push apply. All right, so that pretty much took out all the underlay, all right? Let me see. So on our 10 point checklist, the third item was density, where we just changed the density. Okay, so we put it to a 0.4 uh, with a stitch. No, we we changed our density yeah, to a 0.4 with a stitch, stitch length of four, all right? So that's three is density, four is stitch length, five stitch angles. We'll get to stitch angle right now. We're in number six right now, underlay, all right? So underlay, this is a big one right here, all right? It's a big one, actually. To uh, make your changes for your um, right here, which is called shape, 
okay go to shape and then you could put your like your start stops usually i like to start on the bottom and work my way up all right here's my green and then stitch angle let's go back to this one all right stitch angle oh yeah this black one here this is your stitch angle right here uh what i don't like about it right here is that it doesn't it doesn't tell you it's not reading you your angles like it's not telling you hey um like right now i might be like at a 20 percent this is like a 15 percent after a while you like you could eyeball certain angles that you want but if you want precise okay you you you're not gonna get precise but you could kind of eyeball it right so Usually you could go like at 15%, okay? Then you push enter. So everything you do, you gotta push enter, all right? Like it won't do it just automatic. So you can see like this yellow line is our stitch angles. So all of our threads or our uh, stitches are gonna follow that. All right, um, all right. And so we got that, all right? Now let's go to Let me change this color because it's like a uh, funky green. Let me see if I can. Let's go to this blue right here. Okay. All right, bam. So when I select it, you can see a little bit better. All right. Bam. So let's talk about this uh, underlay. Okay, underlay. So here, contour. So if I'm, it's going to give you options. You could do uh, contour, which is equivalent to your edge run. So if you have um, Wilcom, you'll know it as edge run. Here it's called. And then here, there's like a little drawing, little square here. Okay. Apply. Okay, bam. You see that little round. Now, one thing that I always say that I like to really highlight when I'm digitizing, especially when I'm using Wilcom, right? This is really, I always say, and you hear me say, everything is adjustable, okay? Everything in embroidery, if there's something you don't like, all right? Usually when you're doing a sample, there's gonna be things you don't like, okay? Whatever you don't like is adjustable. Everything can be changed to fit the way you want it, okay? Same same thing here to a certain, to a certain amount all right so here let me just zoom in to our edge run okay so you see our edge run here okay this distance out is being controlled so let's go back to edge so control so here we have some settings that we can change right we have two millimeter density um stitch length three millimeters all right um, that's probably too long for me i would rather put it 2.5 all right it already has this one's 2.5 all right they might be the one is a run run stitch length one is a stitch length all right but this is the one we want to change 0.7 okay this is what this is really what's telling us how far we're going okay but Let's see what happens when we put zero zero this should trace our design okay so it should put it right on the on the border of our thread so when we put bam right there okay so now i just created kind of like um, a line to go around our border so now if i want to make sure that we got a good trace okay now I could check my trace, all right, by using that one. Bam, now you see it, all right? So like how I said that it, you can't you can't trace or you can't see the, the outline of our trace, you can doing certain manipulations, all right? So you can see here, all right? I'm super zoomed in, okay? If you wanna be, like super perfect, you could go ahead and change, right? Let's say here, right? Let's say 
in reality, this isn't this is no problem right here. But in reality, if you really wanted to get a perfect um, perfect um, shape, you can move them here. Okay, you can move your your nodes. You can move your nodes here, or you could even grab this piece. All right? You see how it in, in the on my arrow, you see that little curve part? It's telling me I could actually adjust it. So, say you want it to be per, super perfect. Okay. Now we got it perfect right there. All right. And then you could just follow along. Right. You could change that one there. All right. Bam. So so far, we're doing all right. This one kind of changes because, let me see. Yeah, we still got a good drawing right here. All right. Actually, it shows you the line right here, too. Okay, this is your stitch angle. All right. Now, let's put some underlay on this. All right now underlay very important right especially in fill stitches i would say on fill like this where you see where it's covering a full area okay i will say underlay is mandatory all right pretty usually in embroidery you don't want to say like you have to do this all right because then somebody comes behind you and doesn't do it and everything comes out nice but i'm gonna say this in in a big space like this where we're putting a fill stitch um underlay is mandatory okay mandatory or else instead of getting this nice looking oval okay we're gonna get like a shifted oval like it's not gonna come out as uh correct shape okay what underlay is doing it's like the bones the bones of our shape if we don't put bones in it, it's going to be like a spaghetti and it's going to be all over the place. All right. So what underlay should we use? Right. That's always the big question. What underlay should we use? When, anytime I'm dealing with. Um, with uh, fill stitches. OK, I'm going to pull this one, the edge run. I'm going to pull it back out. I'm used to putting it at a four point five. I mean, not for. 0.45 millimeters so that's from the edge of what i traced on in okay you don't want to be super at the border or else you're going to have that that running stitch showing at the very end so i'm going to put four or five now one thing about here about chroma when i push apply all right it doesn't let me it's going to round up okay it doesn't let me go into the fine details of 0.45 gonna say hey you got to choose a whole number you either got to be 0 0.3 4 or 0 0.5 all right so i'm cool with 0 0.5 okay and of course i want a uh, tatami underlay so here the tatami underlay is called the lattice all right so lattice push apply bam so now we have something running perpendicular all right bam and now it's all about setting our settings of our because usually you would just leave this alone right you're gonna say hey i need underlay all right let's go to the next step but let's stop and think about what is under inside this um underlay all right so let's go back here density three millimeter two millimeters all right pretty pretty dense all right pretty dense all right i'm gonna put three all right three um stitch length 2.5 oh actually that's yeah that's the one i changed all right instead of going down i should have gone up this one i'm gonna put stitch length uh four three four run stitch length all right, and then everything else is good. Slant. Bam. So these are just walkie stitches here. Okay. 
So let me control Z that one. So before I had 4,149 and then 4,041, brought it down to 36, all right? So that's like 500 stitches less just on that little setting of underlay, all right? And all these numbers, like how I'm bringing down the, the stitch count, it's all going to add up at the very end, all right? At the very end, um, when you're very conscious of, of all your stitches, of what's happening under, um, your, your stitches start dro dropping down. So, so far, I think I brought down 900, 500. That's like 1,400 stitches, right? Just on this fill stitch, right? So you always got to take into account all your settings so you can make sure that you're not doing overkill, not putting so much stitches as necessary, okay? Because you would think, you would think sometimes the software is going to automatically put the settings you need, but you need to override a lot of these settings. All right. All right. Um, let's see what other settings we have. So that was underlay. So we're good with underlay. All right. Uh, next one, pool comp. Okay, pool comp. That's what number, number seven. All right. So number seven on the 10 point checklist is your pool compensation. All right. Fill stitches like this, where you got a big chunk, it likes to pull, right? What happens? is it's it's running right left to right left to right left to right left to right you know every time it pivots okay let's push play on this let me tell you what i'm talking about every time so look it's going from one book hold on let it let it do this edge run first all right every time it goes from one side bam to another Look, to another right there. Every time it turns, it's pulling. When it's turning, when it's pivoting, it's going to pivot and pull, okay? It's so small that you can't really see it. But when you add up all those turns, it's pulling fabric. So here, okay, bam, when it turns right there, it just pulled a little tiny bit, but all those pulls, at the very end, pool, right? So it's not going to create that perfect shape that you that you're anticipating. So what we have to do, we have to compensate for that pool. So here is where we're focus is. All right, our focus is these areas, okay? Because at the very end, when we finally stitch it. This is gonna pull slightly. So at the very end, your stitch is gonna look like this, all right? Instead of being like this, it's gonna be like this, all right? And that little small movement, okay? We're talking about like little tiny millimeters of a movement that came in, okay? That little millimeter of the movement is what create gaps, all right? So in order to compensate for that, okay? Let's zoom in. So in order to compensate for that, bam, let me put this, you could put uh, little guides right here. All right, I'm gonna put that guide right there. Okay, on a normal day, this is as far as this thread is gonna come out, right? But when we add our pull comp, so here it says type, Okay, I like dealing with absolute. Absolute means you're going to give it a, a, an exact number. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't work with percentage. It's like It doesn't make sense to work with percentage. Um, because if you kind of, you want to tell the software exactly how much you want to extend. Okay. On Wilcom, or what I'm used to, standard is, one, is 0.17. Okay, so if I put 0.17, it's not going to allow me, it's just going to round up to 0.2, right? So it doesn't want to do, or went to 0.1, all right? But I want 0.2. All right, so you can see here with our line, just that smudge of difference that it, it gave us. 
right? I'm like super zoomed in. Hopefully it doesn't crash this computer. So if we measure this, R for ruler, or we, R, all right, we should be at 0.2. All right, we're close right here, all right? So that should be 0.2, right? The ruler, it doesn't look like it's too, see? Yeah, it doesn't look like it's too, too accurate, but there it goes, should be all the way up here, all right? So if you don't trust that one, we could probably even put 0.3. All right, let me go back here. Three. Bam, now, all right. So that what that did, it, it expanded everything that's being pulled. So this pivot going from one side to another. All right, so let, let me show you the big picture so you could see. All right, so this is right here. If you're struggling like with gaps, you have gaps in your design, a lot of times it's your push pull. Okay. So let me show you zero is right here. All right. So it's like so tiny that you it doesn't even look like nothing happened. All right. So I'm gonna put it now at three point three. All right. So it expanded a tad bit. All right. Now, whatever hap this area is being pulled. But here on top, it's pushing, all right? So you, you always got to take that into account also. So hold on. I'm pushing like my hotkeys that I'm used to from Wilcom. Yeah. All right. So here, all right, here, it looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to stitch out here. But in reality, this area is gonna get pulled. So what happens on one side gets pulled, the opposite side is gonna do the opposite. So this side's gonna push. So it's gonna push like out here, All right? So take that into consideration. It might be so small and we have overlap, so that's fine, okay? And then you could also, if you wanna just pull, create your own push-pull. So here I'm pulling these, um, let me these guides right here. So when I pull it, hold shift, it does both sides. All right. So this is usually like a safe way to do your uh, push pull also. Okay. And then here, since this is going to come up, if you want to push down a bit, you can push this down a bit. All right. So I'm going to do it like exaggerated so you can kind of see it. Of course, we don't want that much. All right. Bam. All right, so that here, pretty thorough explanation of our fill right here. All right, and then let me see, on our 10-point checklist, we have our, so pool comp, we already talked about our pool comp, start, stop, right? Very important here, so green means where you want to start, red means where you want to stop. And I like starting from the bottom, working my way up. And I want to make sure I'm at the opposite location because if we're somewhere here in the middle, okay, if we're here in the middle, when you push play, this is play right here, like this speedometer. All right. When we push play, All right, it's going to start like from one side. All right, and then move to the move down. And I would stay away from this type of fill because usually what happens, it could create like a bubble, like in that middle part. All right, so I try to stay away from that. What I like to do is let's go here. Put it at the opposite end. Okay. 
So that way, when we play it, okay, it does that. Then it starts from the bottom and it'll push all the way up in one shot. Okay, so it pushes all that fabric up. And you don't get no crazy like single line in the middle. Okay, sometimes you get like a weird line dividing it is because that's where like the break was. All right, and then start, stop, tie-ins, tie-outs, all right? Very important here because I was actually pretty surprised. It doesn't do it automatic for you. So you have to come in. So we are, so we talked about this, yeah, pool comp. And then this one, general, it's like, hey, you got to upgrade, right? So whatever that one was, blend, okay? Blend, you got to upgrade, okay? Unless you're doing crazy stuff like that, all right? Um, commands, all right. This is the important one here, commands, all right? So this is on the 10-point checklist, number eight, or actually number nine was the tie-in tie-outs. Actually, I forgot to put the number 10. But number nine was tie-ins, tie-outs. So I would say like 99% of everybody knows that when you start a stitch, you got to do a tie-in, okay? Or else your thread at that starting point may become loose. And at the, ver and at the very end, you need a tie-out to lock that stitch, okay? So in the beginning, um, okay, so here, you have tie-in, it says none, but we need one, right? We need one. So here you have three types. I like the basic. Usually the basic is like the five, the five points, like three going or yeah, three going forward, two going back, and then starts the one. All right. Or vice versa, one of them. All right. But it goes, it takes a couple steps forward, step back, and then it starts stitching. Okay. That'll lock lock in that stitch. Tie off. We need a tie off here. So we could do a basic right there too. Okay. Bang. And then also, like how I said in the beginning of the the live, you can also put a, a, a walkie stitch, like a global underlay. So you can put it, usually, um, hold on, let me explain it like this different. Let me select the fill stitch, all right? Let me select this fill stitch. When I when I put start, like that green, it won't let me start somewhere inside the fill stitch, right? It's going to say, hey, you better choose the outside of. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll start here on the side. But if I do want to start somewhere in the middle, you can just run a, a walking stitch. Okay, you could put a walking stitch to that starting point. All right, and then just move that walking stitch from the beginning. All right, because sometimes um, in certain situations, I don't like to start my first stitch on the side. So let's say like right here. So here you can put like walking towards your area, then you start your thing, all right? Just kind of like a side note right there. All right, now, so we got our fill stitch ready to go, right? Ready to go. And let's hide that, all right? All right, that was the red. What should we do next, right? There's no right or wrong answer what we should do next, all right? I just hid the red. That one's ready to go. We could We could stitch that one out ready to go. So far, it has 3,789 stitches, right? So we drop down the stitches with our settings. That's why it's good. It's good um, practice to, to learn your settings, okay? That way, you might think like, hey, can I, can I, let's say you're going from like a hat to a polo shirt and you're like, hey, I have a very thin polo shirt, but I want to bring down the, the stitches a bit, okay? Sometimes you could do little small tweaks. And what I like to do when when the way I learn digitizing, 
I would study from digitizers, all right? I would grab uh, anytime I would uh, purchase files, right? Or send files out to, to get digitized. When I got them back, instead of watching football, instead of watching like all any TV show or what's going on, I would just look at the digitizing file, push play, like you could here, right? Same way you could push play on here. And I would just look at what the sequence, how did a uh, how did the digitizer do certain things? All right, I'm trying to push play right here, but it's not letting me. All right, I thought I crashed it. All right, what I what I would do? Okay, I'm pretty sure everybody here uh, on the live you have a library filled, filled with designs, all right? Just go in and kind of see what settings, right? Especially the the, the designs that you really like, uh, the designs that you use, go in and check the settings. See what settings your digitizer use, okay? Uh, that way you could get like a starting point. You could say, hey, I like, uh, this one was a good file. This is like a good starting point, okay? You can always make designs better. You can always, lower stitch count by just changing little simple settings all right all right um now let's go in let's do this uh i'm gonna do the white the letters all right the letters um this is probably out of everything it's probably probably the letters the, the white letters and the black borders is probably the challenging part the side really is just like uh, sand stitch, right? Sand, sand stitch uh, border, all right? All right. Um, I do got good questions right here. All right. Hold on. All right. I'll try to get back to questions, but yeah, we're good right here. All right. All right. Um, then I see this question here. This is a good one here. Uh, Marlaw Square Work Products. Is there a manual for Chroma to assist with explaining the various options? So here on help, it says manual. Okay. Uh, there's a manual, but it, it only has like definitions. Like it is, it's going to tell you it's like basic stuff. All right. Really. Uh, I didn't find like a manual that's like, okay, because let me show you right here. Okay. When I think of a manual, let me show you this one right here. All right. To me, this is where I learned the game right here. All right. Look at this one. This is the Wilcom manual right here. All right. Look at this. This is, this was like a lot of info. All right. This is like getting into the details of stuff. All right. This one right here was a good one. I got that one in my, um, I got that one from Amazon. Okay. It was like, I don't know when I bought it a couple of years ago, it was like what? 50 some bucks. Okay. That, that, that book right there has paid times 100. All right. Of what I paid for. All right. But, um, Those are the type of stuff that I put like on my Amazon link. Like, hey, this is the stuff that I use. Okay. You can find that in the Amazon link too that I put in the description. All right. What I like to do, I like to get manuals from other software because everything is the language of, of embroidery digitizing really is all the same. Okay. Stitch length, density, millimeters. Everything you everything you could apply it to here. The only thing that changes is what tools you have and where your your icons are located. Okay, here my icons are different than what I'm used to. Okay, but after a couple rounds, okay, I, I since I know the fundamentals of of stitches, okay, I could kind of work my way around it. All right, so just because there isn't a manual for this one. Okay. You can still learn or 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 learn the fundamentals of embroidery and apply it here. 
All right. All right. That was kind of like a tangent answer right there. All right, but okay, let's um let's go in and do these letters. All right. So this goes back. Okay, this goes back into now we're starting from again, right? Ten point checklist. Every time we do like a new object or a new part of the design, we gotta start from the beginning again. Okay, we went through the through the checklist of um the fill stitch, right? Which was like the easiest part of this whole design is that red fill stitch. That's the easiest part of this whole thing. Okay, but now let's go into the SF, the white portion. Okay, definitely, definitely, we can easily, because we measured it in the beginning, we can easily use sand stitches. Uh, when possible, letters, they always look nice and clean when they have sand stitches, all right? So we measured it. Uh, the longest part of the S was like at about eight, eight point something millimeters. So we're definitely in a safe zone for for sand stitches. All right. So we're going to do sand stitches, uh, but we got to break it up. Right. The first part of the 10 point checklist is sequence. OK, what are we going to do first? Obviously, we got to do what the F. Right. We should do the F first. Uh, Normally, you want to start from bottom up, center out, right? So, of course, we could do the bottom part of the F, work our way up, right? And then do the S on top, all right? So, it's all about breaking pieces, breaking it in pieces, okay? It's all about breaking our design in pieces. If we were to measure, so let's go into this, make sure I'm good here. Okay, if I were to measure, let's take out the ruler. Um, all right, just making sure you can see my ruler. Yeah, so if you could see my ruler right here, it says 18 millimeters, right? This is definitely no go for sand stitches, right? It'd be crazy to have a sand stitches right here, right? Even if your machine can do it, it'd be like super loose. Right, like it, somebody will easily snag it and then the whole, everything will come apart, right? It would look like this. So now we're going into our third tool. Really, we only have three tools that you have. Super limited, all right? Super limited, Chrome Inspire, but it's not the end of the world, okay? It's not the end of the world. We're gonna work with what we have, okay? Here, this uh the classic sand that i have here this is equivalent to the column a in wilcom okay so if you have wilcom or if you have other ones but usually this one's called the column a uh so we gotta cut this we gotta cut this in pieces all right because if not right if 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 we were to go ahead and break the rules of embroidery with an 18 millimeter, right? So right now I'm just, we gotta do one side and then we're setting the stitch angle to the next side, all right? If we were to do all this, hold on. If you, got, if you wanna delete the last one, you just push delete and it goes back to this one. All right, so right here, right? It looks like it's all good, but we know, right? Just because the, just because the software is telling us that we're good, right? It's looking good right here, but we know because we measured, we can't go this far, right? It's too big. It's too. It's too long. All right, so let's let's not go that route. Let's delete that. We're gonna have to break this up in pieces. So let's go back to our sand stitch. Okay, we could go bam. Okay, we're just running parallel. And then, so when you click here, right here, I'm gonna put a round stitch. Bottom is going straight, so round. So here you can see the stitch angles that you're doing. So at the same time that you're tracing, you're setting your stitch angles, right? So I'm gonna put here, this is a rounded, right? 
I'm going to kind of come in and I'll tell you why. I'm going to kind of come in here. I'm not going to trace it perfect. Okay, and I'll tell you why. And then up here, come up here, bam, straight here. Okay. Straight. And then just kind of like mirror what I just did. Okay. And then we could always adjust certain things. All right, reason why I didn't, well, I'll tell you right now. Let me just do this part here. I set it up here. Uh, it's not telling you the, the stitch length, all right? So, but we already measured it, we're good. All right, bam, we gotta cut it in pieces. So let's go back here to get this angle here. Then. All right. It looks like it's super gap, but all right. But let me. Um. So right now in my head, I'm thinking the route. It's like the escape route, or the total path route. Okay. I know I'm gonna start on the bottom. I'm gonna work my way here. Okay. Now, where do I go next? Okay, where do I go next? I know if I do this bar here, if I do this middle bar here and end on this side, it'll work, but I don't want to pull this middle part, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk through this corner, all right? Then this out this part. I need a curve here. So it's kind of like similar to what I just did. All right, bam. Now, I want to do this part here. So just trace it. All right, and then go up right here. All right, reason why uh, you can notice that I'm leaving, I'm leaving this part kind of loose right here. All right, because this sand stitch is going to push in and I want this part of the design to kind of fall under this one here. All right, that's why I didn't trace it perfect because if not, it, it, this part will kind of be sticking out. All right. Now you see how these, there's all these like jump stitches right here all over the place. That's because I have to sequence it. Um, I got to sequence it correctly. So I'll put this run. All right. Everything is in order. All right. So I select, I select my items that I just digitized. Let me hide this logo right here. All right. This is really like the, the secret, right? This is the secret of digitizing right here. All right. And that is, this is equivalent to, um, what is it called on Wilcom? Well, let me select it again. All right. Uh, bam, it's going to optimize. So it's going to, ah, why am I drawing a blank? All right. Um, all right it'll, put, it'll come out right now. But when I click this one, optimize entry exit, okay, it's going to, it's going to automatically adjust my um, my start and stops so there's no big jumps like that, right? So once I click that, 
bam, everything went away. Okay. All right. So when you push play, all right. So let's see this. Bam. It's gonna go walk down here. Continue on this one. Put that one. Bam. All right, bam, look at that. Uh, I definitely don't want to end here. So we could go here. Has me stopping here, but I want to actually, hold on. I might go here. Hold on, because selecting the green one first, but I want to put this one out here. This one's good here. All right. Man, so we got that part of that. Now let's talk about our settings, all right? Because the settings is always important right here. Let's make this a different color. Let's make it bluish so we can see it. All right, let's select this. And now we could come in and change our settings, all right? So it's like rinse, rinse and repeat of what we just did, right? Uh, density. Okay, I like to work at 0.38. Okay, apply. So it did, it did, this one does allow me to go into the 0 0.02. So it does allow me to go at 0.38. Right. Let me select all of them. Let me continue doing my um, settings, all right? Let's see where I'm at. Hold on, give me one sec. Let me see where we're at with time. Okay, oh wow, we're coming in. All right. Um, settings, okay? Settings is always the important part. Um. So we got our density. Let's talk about our underlay. Okay, here on Chroma for sand stitches, um, we have contour, which we already said is our edge run. So I always like this for our wide stitches. I always like um, our contour, AKA our um, outer stitch or outer run. Parallel is just your single zigzag. Okay, and then zigzag, if we click on, that's your double zigzag, okay? I'm good with one zigzag or parallel. Um, you could also go center line, okay? So you could put all these. And then your settings is down here below, okay? Uh, inset is your edge run. So I'm good with a 0.45 or it's five because it needs it at the 0.1 decimal. So that's cool, apply. Hold on, that's too much. Um, I'll just put, take out the center line because I already had that parallel, bam, apply. All right. Okay, let's continue doing our settings. Uh, pool comp, all right, absolute. And I just put a standard because no matter what, there should always be pull compensation because no matter what, thread is always pulling itself. So standard is usually 0.17, but I'm going to put 0.12 or 0.2. That's just going to bring it out a tad bit. Okay, avoids the gap, especially here where we have the black, where we have the black uh, outlines. Okay potential for gapping here you see it you always see it right every time you see designs you'll you'll find little small gapping and you gotta like adjust it i won't say always but sometimes when you see other people's work that's kind of like what the eye is looking for the eye is looking for is there any gaps and if there's any gaps right you're always going to see um especially your customer is always going to see when there's gaps, right? So it's always good to test it out. And if you see a gap, your customer is going to see a gap. So it's always good to check that out. 
Uh, Cindy King, I see your question here. How will you compensate for the white being on top of the red with no red showing through? So the red, we're good with the red because the red is just a fill. So we're just stitching on top of that. If we would have cut it up, like in, if we would have chopped up the, the fill, the red part, right? Yeah, you got to co compensate for that. But here, we're just stitching on top of the red. So we're good with that. All right. Um, all right. What I do want to show you. Well, yeah, what I do want to show you. Okay, because. We're already, time is already going hard right here. All right, this was our final. I actually stitched it out. I I, I I digitized it and I stitched it out. So I'm gonna show you a stitch out too right now, right? I, I made it yellow here just because um, I'm using dark twill as a sample, but in reality, it should be black, right? Because that's what I think our color, how our thing look. Let me see how our logo look. Yeah, our logo is black. All right, so let me bring this out. Let me push play. Okay. And like I said before, this is this is gonna be a part. There's gonna be a part two and a part three because I do want to do. Uh, I do want to turn it into, um, of course, flat. Okay, we're kind of focused right now on the flat. We're 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 focused on the settings. Okay, I do want to go into the settings of um, Chroma, and I do want to talk about a couple more stuff here, right? Um, and want to turn it into 3D Puff, and I want to do the the Detroit Lions because I don't want to leave the the Lion fans, you know, out out in the cold, right? So we're gonna also do that this week. All right. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's push play here. Okay. Let me see. Because this one's. All right. Push play. Oh, yeah. So this one just play, does it one by one. But. Okay. So here on uh, Chroma, you have three speeds you have slow, medium, fast. All right. So that's all you're getting. You're not getting anything else. All right, so if we push it slow, you gotta push play here. All right, you just let it run. So right now it's it's gonna do our fill stitch. Did that edge run? Okay, you see that edge run? Now let me push pause right there. Reason why I like that edge run, it's gonna keep the shape, it's gonna keep our shape the way it should be. Okay, is it gonna keep it at a 100 percent No. But with this edge run. That circle that it just did, and this tatami or lattice uh, underlay, okay, it's gonna keep. It's like the bones of our fill stitch, all right. Very, very, very important, or else our oval, right? It's gonna look like it's gonna start shifting and crumbling into pieces, all right. Oh, hold on, forgot you can't push that one. Yeah, all right. So we could go medium speed now, all right? Actually, let's crank it up here because we already know the fill stitch. It's gonna start on the bottom. It's gonna work its way all the way to the top. Okay, so we talked about the settings. Um, and then I'm gonna put this file as a free download, okay? So with a RDE file, so let me just pause it real quick. I'm gonna put it as an RDE file. That way you could go in and just like dissect it, measure, check settings, all right? We did talk about the settings, but there's like other stuff that you could probably check too, all right? Uh, just give me, give me like a couple hours. I gotta just tweak like a little small thing that you're gonna see the sample right now. Okay, that got to get changed like a little tiny bit. All right, now let's slow it down a bit. Let's go medium speed. Let's rewind that one. This is what we just digitized right now, right? So you can see right here, bam. Does that bottom part, all right? Comes in, does that part. Bam, walks over to the next area, all right? It's just doing the my portion. 
So I'm going to do all the white first. And then the black as the border. All right. So bam, do the S. So this was all manually digitized. We didn't use any fonts or anything. Okay. But here we're doing the, the black outline. And there's one thing that I want to highlight with this black outline is when we measured, so in the beginning of the class, I measured that black border and it was measuring at 0.7 millimeters. And that's pretty, for me, 0.7 is too small to do a full border all around. You're not gonna see it too much. So I put a pool compensation of 0.5. And when we talk about a pool compensation, Pool compensation of 0.5. Let me just pause this real quick while I'm saying this. We're talking about it's going to add 0.5 on the right and 0.5 on the left. So you're getting um, one millimeter total on extra distance. Okay. So if we, if I measured at 0.7 and I added a 0.5 pool compensation, we're getting 0.5 times two, one millimeter plus that 0.7. So my total. Stitch length is 1.7 millimeters. All right. And I'll show you on the stitch out how it came out. So here we do the border. We're doing the outside first. Okay. Bam. So you can see the underlay that I use. I use a center run with a zigzag. I already forgot what they call it here, the zigzag, but does a zigzag and then it's gonna do the top part white bam right here. So same thing. Okay, so let's speed it up here. Bam, it's gonna do that one. And there's actually two things that I want to talk about this design. Okay, very important, especially with chroma. Um all right. And then here it tells you uh, total stitch count, 10,133 trims, six trims. All right. Um, something that I want to highlight. Okay. Let's delete these outer stitches. That's fine there. Let's delete this one. All right. Take this one. All right. Let's do this uh, yellow. Okay, so here, okay, this is where you're kind of limited, all right? This is where you're limited. Um, usually, here, you could use like a, a steel, steel stitch, so it says Lux only, all right? This one's a good one to have is a steel stitch because you could easily do your, your, your borders, right? Super easy day if you're using steel stitch. Here, we got to go old school. And we got to go, we got to just go ahead. Hold on. Let's delete that one. Let's start again. We got to go and just manually digitize these. All right. So we got to go in. Okay. So it's definitely not impossible. It's just going to take you a couple more minutes. All right. That's all it's going to do. But you create your... You could, when you're digitizing, you could add, you could trace and already um, like give some space for your uh, pool compensation. But what I do, I just add like a good chunk of pool comp, like a 0. 0.6, all right? Because I want to get like a, a as accurate as possible trace. And sometimes when you um, when you're tracing past the borders, you might not get the most perfect one. So I just like to trace it according to the actual design, right? And once again, if you don't get it this perfect on this on this try, you can always go back and fix and fine tune it, all right? And like I said earlier, 
I'm going to come in and I'm going to do it also on Wilcom. All right. So all my Wilcom users, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging this week. I'm going to come in and with Wilcom, I'm going to come in and just like bam, 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 bam. Knock this out like quick and easy. All right. So you still do it like this. Okay. Of course, you could take your time or you could go in back in here and fine tune it. Okay. You could go in. Oops. All right. We could go in. If there's anything we got to fix. Okay. Right here. Okay. You could always. This is the only thing I don't like. You have to move the stitch angle. Then you move your guys right here. Okay. If you got to do any fine tuning, then you can put your stitch angle back. All right. All right. So, and then every time we create Every time we create an object, you always got to go back and take care of your settings. Okay. So if the big one here, all right, what I would recommend, always go in here and your tie in, tie off. You always want tie ins, tie off. Okay. Or else you're going to have loose thread right there. Okay. Um, there should be, there should be. Something that would just save. Well, no, that wouldn't make sense because sometimes you don't want all your, but something like this where there's only one object, you want it to be tie in, tie out. Okay. Or if you have multiple objects like our whites here, you always want the first object to have your tie in and your last one to have your tie off. Okay. Because you always do it in the beginning. When the needle stitching in the beginning, it does a tie on. Okay. And at the very end, right before that trim, you want that tie off. Okay. All right. And so that was this one. All right. So that, and then um, also this one that I wanted to highlight the black. So here, the settings. Like I was saying before, where I added the the pull comp. All right. Actually, I added, yeah, the 0. 0.5. So that's where the 0. 0.5 times 2 plus the 0. 0.7 of the actual one. All right. So I did add 0. 0.5. Okay. Just center run. Anything 1.5 of a sand stitch, you don't want too much underlay or else you're going to have that thread kind of sticking out in the background. All right. All right, so cool. So let's put that. All right, let me let me get to um, some questions right here. All right. And one thing, if you're learning like digitizing software, if you're learning Chroma, the best way to learn, all right, the best way to learn is to get your favorite logos, all right, and just Digitize it, stitch it out. See how you can do it better. Go back in there and do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Or even like designs, companies that you work for or friends, families, okay? Do their logo over and over and over. It's all repetition, 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 repetition. All right. That's really the name of the game is repetitions. That's all it is. And keeping in mind the 10 point checklist. Okay, uh, I am going to put the 10 point checklist, uh, the live that we did like almost a year ago. Because that one, right, really goes into the detail. And, and the way I like to format the classes, I like to make it where any it, it's it's compatible with any software. OK, you just kind of kind of got to see what tools you have and work with what tools you have. OK, so. Oh, I do want to show you the stitch out also of this one. All right. But let me, um, because there are some lessons learned, small little tweaks that I'm telling you, it looks good on the screen, 
but when you stitch it out it's like okay we gotta fix some stuff up right so i'm gonna show you the stitch out right now okay let me go here all right bam get the camera ready let me just get some um questions here all right oh all right, super packed day today here. Oh, All right. Um, so some videos that that's going to come. I'm trying to do them this week. Okay, but we might bleed into next week. But I do want to do the, the impression show. Uh, everything that I learned, that I saw, and that I experienced there. Okay. Um, a lot of cool companies that I know, like when I was meeting some of these companies, in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, wow, this, this company would be perfect for this person, or this company would be perfect for that person. Like, I know there was so much, there was so much different stuff there for different like types of people and uh, genres, different genres of embroidery. All right, um, but yeah, it's gonna be some good stuff. All right, and then, yep, I like this one right here. All the software, the same and basic. Yeah, the, the basic stuff, okay. If you're going from like a, a, a super powerful digitizing software down to something basic, all right, it's, it's, it's like digitizing with, like your hands tied okay but you can still do what you have to do okay you can still do you just gotta find ways to do it all right uh if you're just learning digitizing okay and you're using something basic just keep on pushing all right keep on pushing keep on repetition because eventually you're gonna like upgrade to something better or something uh like higher tier and you're gonna be like, oh man, this is like super easy because you've already done like the hard work and the, the, yeah, you've already done it the hard way, and then it gets easy. All right, for your t-shirts, you got Chroma Lux. All right, Moto Mat Moto Matash. I need number ten. Number ten. All right, I don't know what that was. All right, all right. Ariel's 402 for Omaha, Nebraska. The great Malcolm X, pound for pound boxer, Terrence Crawford. All right. All right. Um, oh, yeah, we'll talk about this one, too. It's, it's crazy what you would see at these trade shows. What do you think of the 2000 SPM machine that was on? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to talk about all that. There's so much stuff. Oh, all right. I appreciate you, man. I want to take a picture, but then want no, that was cool. I took tons and tons of picture with I do appreciate everybody. Um yeah, I took a lot of pictures with people. Yeah, Mighty Hoop just had pretty much everything that you needed. Like every back holding, you're gonna see all that stuff. I got a video of all that stuff. All right, all right. Um let me see questions. I am going to talk about, I'm going to set like, I have like, I'm thinking it's going to be like an hour video because there's so much to talk about that, uh, the impression show. All right. Probably one of the greatest days of my embroidery journey was Saturday. And I only did, I only went Saturday. Okay. I won't put too much stuff out because it, yeah. All right. Crafty Puerto Rican. Half Chroma Essential came with my machine so far. I've been only using the auto. All right, definitely. So you saw me today. I did not even mention touch, get near the auto digitizing. All right, it's definitely, uh, yeah, I don't mess with auto digitizing because at the end of the day, you're going to go back and you're going to spend more time fixing auto digitizing than you would just going in and manually digitizing.
All right. And then I do appreciate that. So ready for the Mighty Hoops. We'll order soon. Use the promo code. Yup. Appreciate that. All right. Let's see. And then uh, appreciate using Chrome Inspire. So yeah, I'm telling you, I probably got like this question like 500 times to show Chroma, okay? Um, we showed you like the basics, right? The basic tools, how to go about using them. Uh, it's all about doing it over and over and over and over. Hey, Marisa, how you doing? So let me tell you about Southern Cali, okay, here in San Diego. All right, so this show was like very close to being canceled because or postponed because the rain here. I don't know if you saw the, the news here in San Diego, but it is like super flooded all over the place. So I was like driving, finding all these crazy alternate routes. Okay, so when I made it home, set up. But yeah, a lot of people that I know, they're still like in traffic. Like the 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 freeways got flooded where people couldn't even move. So yeah, it was crazy today. All right. Hey, JR Ignacio Sanchez. All right. Glad to have you here. Hey, what's up, Excel Stitch and Prince? Texas in the house. And then this one, yeah, this is kind of like what I touched on, uh, where you where you pick like the fabric that you're using it. It's gonna give you automatic underlay, but as you saw, I went in and I changed like the the underlay. I mean the the settings that was given. Okay. Um, because it was it was adding like nine thousand nine hundred stitches on some stuff, and I ended up taking out like fourteen hundred stitches. All right, which is a lot of stitches. So, and this is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good story right there. Well, I met you right there. Right. Do appreciate it. Yeah. No. Uh the game, the game. Watching the game. That kind of inspired me. I was like, man, I like I I when I'm watching uh football or sports, I'm just looking at like hats, their polo shirt, their sideline shirts, looking at all the at all their detail and inf and yeah, that's kind of and then T Town, he moved to Lux real fast. Yeah. Because, I mean, all right, hold on. Let me see. Ben. Ben, ben. Hey, Jelaine, how you doing? From Texas. Oh. So, good question here uh, about the tracing part. So, you can see, usually I like to trace perfectly. Okay, I don't like to kind of go out out of the border. I'll trace it perfectly. And most, most, I would say like 90% of the time, I could just, uh, I could adjust the uh, pool compensation. Uh, and then Cindy King, good question here. Since I have uh, several borders, would you go ahead and do the underlay for the whole? I did the underlay for each border, but you could do a global underlay. That that could be a good idea. So that was a good one there. Hey, Jesse, how you doing? All right. We got Napa, Napa, California in the house. Napa, California, Napa Valley, Mario. Hey, Craftable Things, nice to have you. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Are we able to? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post this file. Just give me like a couple hours. I'm just gonna like get something to eat. Go back and just tweak one little small thing. Damps in the house. Damps designs. And then, and then Eddie, what's up? So, always start at 5 p.m. on the dot. 5 p.m. Pacific, Pacific time. All right, on the dot. Uh, and then uh, I'm gonna post a file. If I if I ever post a file on a class. I'll post it on the description. So on this description here. All right. Yeah. And then Jesse, why didn't you digitize it at 1.5 millimeters? Of height, I'm thinking you're talking about height. That was just like a, I'll show you the, I'll show you the stitch out. It's kind of like a sweet size that I got, like, where the, where the sand stitches are, are still good. Yeah. Yeah. Then can we see a close up of your hat? Yeah, yeah. So I want to show you this hat that I got at the, at the expo. All right, so it like from a distance, like if you were like from right here, it doesn't look like it's embroidered, right? It looks like it's just like printed. But then, hold on, let me, let me oh, turn down the light a bit. Yeah, so you're gonna see information I got information on this hat company here. All right. Look at that. This is super fresh right here. All right. Bam, look at that one. See? Yep, outdoor cap. Yeah, it was a fresh hat. Like once I got it, I was like, oh, I'm definitely using this on Monday. Eddie used the deluxe, have zero issues. All right. Yeah, I think there's a good a good comment right here. The problem is people don't stay with one software and play with different. Yep. I like to stay with one. Okay. I've been, I've been like offered like so many different software. Like, hey, can you can you use our software? Can you? Use... And I'm already like 100% zoned in with uh, Wilcom, but that doesn't say that I can't go out right out of my comfort zone and learn other ones, right? Just to kind of teach for the class, right? Oh wow, spent fifty thou. All right. That's crazy. I spent well what I bought. See, I should save all this information for the for the impression video. But I spent I bought one thing. I bought uh three hundred fifty bucks. I bought a uh, so you see the right here, this guy right here. This hat hoop. Oh, but the bigger one. Let me see this one here. The big, the big uh, back cap, the Gen Two. But that one. And then Mighty, yeah, Mighty Hoops was having. They were having uh, a good deal right there. Good deal. And then this one was 
at pay how to pay California tax rate trade by there. All right, no deal. Yeah, all right, that was. Yeah, I kind of explained this one where you said it was 0 0.07. 0 0.7. It was 0 0.7. The, the black sand on the drawing was 0 0.7, but then I add 0 0.5 pool compensation. So that's 0 0.5 on both sides. And then uh, I started with Chroma. I've been struggling. I suggest I switch program. Um, it all depends. Like you could always you could always try other stuff. Right. So even though I said jumping from one software to another. Um, so what I meant was it's always good to test. There's a, a, a lot of companies. Right. Even Wilcom. Wilcom has pushed for um, free trial versions. Have your design, have your logos ready. So when you do your free trial versions of any of any software. All right. You're in there. Give yourself like two weeks where you're going to have time to go in. OK. Um, and just kind of see what, what kind of works for you. All right. All right, cool. I think we're good with that. Um, very good show today. I, uh, I, I always say that you cannot learn embroidery in one hour or you can't even learn it in one day, in one week, okay? It's like a forever learning. Even me, I'm I'm always learning. I'm always testing. I'm always pushing how I can push my designs to the limit. Okay, if something's not looking right, everything is adjustable in embroidery. Everything you can always bring, uh, even if it's a little tiny stitch that's out of place, you can always bring that into place. All right, hold on. Before I was about to um, close it off, I forgot to show you guys the stitch out. Okay, let me get the stitch out here for y'all. Hold on, give me one second. Let me set this camera. Give me one sec. So, um, one thing that I've been pushing this year is kind of emphasizing to learn embroidery, to learn digitizing, okay? Three steps, okay, three steps. We gotta get the theory, like the, the, the information, right? Like kind of what we're doing right now, okay? This is only step one, okay? You need to complete the three steps to learn it, right? So step one is get the information. Step two is stitch out, okay? Actually, there's two parts. There's the actual, the clicks, you gotta go in there if you're doing, if you're learning digitizing, you got to go in there and you got to get your clicks, okay? You got to do like what they say, your 10,000 hours and repetition, repetition, repetition. And then you got to stitch it out, okay? You got to stitch out what you're digitizing, what you're working on, so you can see it with your own eyes. Compare software with stitch out, okay? Compare software, stitch out, check what, what has to be tweaked or changed go back switch it on the on the software stitch it out again okay until you got it like down packed perfect okay that's really the the whole circle of how to learn how to digitize all right um all right let's do let's see the stitch out right here all right let's talk about some lessons learned because there's always lessons learned i'm not going to say that hey we just digitized it. Uh, you guys are, you guys are, everything was perfect when it stitched out because it wasn't. Okay. There's always things that, that, that need to get adjusted. Right. So this was the stitch out. Okay. Um, this was actually my first stitch out using Chroma. Right. I've never used Chroma. I, I I've never uh, did a project. Okay, I've always messed around with Chroma, but never actually sent it out. Okay, so it's not too bad for, all right? But I want to do show you some lessons learned right here. Okay, so looking at it, okay, this is super zoomed in right here. All right, 
super zoomed in with the light box light so any imperfection is gonna stand out and i'm pretty sure you can see okay and then i can move it and then when you see it in person it looks totally normal right but when i zoom in even when i'm looking at it in camera you can see things that just with the normal eye you don't see right but some things right some things that i notice and i'm pretty sure you're noticing it right it's how we build our eye for embroidery okay here you can see that gap okay we got that gap and really you see gapping on curves all right so we have this white curving and we have the gold and i made it gold so we can see anything that's out of place all right because if i were to uh, have done it black we really wouldn't have seen this little tiny gap that's right here all right all right so we have to come in and we got to make some adjustments here we got to pull okay you can either pull this white portion out or pull the gold in all right just one side so that's what we talk about when we talk about compensation. Same thing down here. So really, it's at this angle here and the diagonal one that's here. All right. Borders. Let's talk about these borders. Perfect. All right. If you look at this. So when, when I said that we had a 1.7 millimeters. All right. This is 1.7. I think this is sweet spot for a border. Okay. Here. Okay, you would have to really zoom in right here. Tiny gap between the this part, this white and the black. All right, so we got to pull this guy in. So right now, before I put this file for free download, I'm going to pull this guy in here. All right, we're talking about millimeters. All right, they say football is a game of inches. All right, embroidery definitely a game of millimeters okay so this guy we just put, same thing with, with with this part of the f here a little tiny okay but overall sand stitches clean sharp all right all my angles here bam the s all right it's just the little minor details this is the importance of sample stitch outs so this one here, perfect size. I would say perfect size for um, polo. Definitely for a hat. Okay. So make these little tiny changes. Okay. Tiny, tiny, tiny changes. All right. But I definitely like to show you guys. Um, I definitely like to show you guys stitch outs because. If you don't stitch it out, it's like it didn't even count, all right? It's like the whole training, right, is all theory-based. But now that we introduced the actual stitch out, okay, and that way you could go in, you could stitch it out for yourself, and then if you can make any changes, all right, if you want to make it better, you can always make it better. All right. All right. So. So we got what two two hour fifteen minutes, all right. And then we're gonna finish with this question because I do appreciate this question that you just got right here. All right, this is the question of the day right here. All right, I like it. All right, how do you know when the problem is your embroidery and not your machine, right? Because people are always quick to blame something all right me included especially when i started when i started i was blaming everybody but myself all right but how do you know when it's you when it's your embroidery machine um okay uh first before we even start stitching anything out we should already know that our 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 machine is ready to go so we do tension tests okay you could have a file that you know is a known good file. You could stitch that out if it's good. Okay, you know your machine's doing good. All right. Um, 
I would say you're going to know. OK, that's number one. How do you know if it's your machine? Uh, if 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 somebody if you paid a digitizer and they gave you something. That's kind of the hard one there. OK, that's that's where you got to go in and analyze the design. You're going to have to measure stuff out and you're just going to have to kind of make adjustments because believe it or not, even when I send, I still send some stuff out to digitizers. And not always, right? Not always does it come back 100% perfect. There's times I got to go in there and I do a stitch out and I say, okay, I got to make tiny changes. Okay. So I'll say that. I'll say check your machine before you before you even stitch out samples. Make sure your machine's ready to go. Second, be prepared to make little small adjustments, right? Because no matter how of an expert a digitizer is, um, different variables is going to affect stitches. So you're always going to make adjustments no matter what. All right. All right. Do appreciate that question, though. All right. All right. I want to thank everybody for coming by today. Um, we're definitely going to have parts two, part three. I, I want to include the Detroit Lions, so we're going to include that. Um, I'll probably keep these um, files for free for like a week, all right, once I post them. Uh, I'll put all, all the information there, all right? Uh, so I do want to thank you. If you have any questions, um, leave it down in the comments. Hit that like, all right? Spread the word to your embroidery friends, to your embroidery family, all right? And I'll see you guys next week live, same time, Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Okay, to the next one. Peace out, everybody.